there is a purpose for your life and that you can know it. Well, do you know God as your provider? Did God mm -hmm. call you there or did you call yourself wow. there? Yeah. Because if God called you there, you're his problem. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you're his blessing. That's a really cool way to look at you it. You know, so, but you better know God as your provider. Mm -hmm. This is the will of God concerning you. I don't mm -hmm. have to guess. Yeah. Yeah. To forgive, to love, to be patient, to be gentle, yeah. to, to bear your burden with yeah. you. To, I, I mean, I'd, I don't need to have a special word from heaven That's to right. do that. Yeah. It's not that people don't know the will of God. I think God makes it clear. Mm. It's that people don't like it. Yeah. They don't love the will of God. Well, welcome to the Mezzanine Floor Podcast, where we talk about living in the tension between heaven and earth. We're so glad to be back on the podcast. Yeah. We're episode three. Um, wherever you're listening, thank you for tuning in. If you're listening on YouTube, uh, help us out. Hit that subscribe button. If you're on any other podcast app, make sure you follow the channel. Uh, but we're so excited to have back with us again. Pastor Dave, mm -hmm. um, I'm super excited to get back into this conversation uh, with you. I feel like we've been getting to know each other a lot more over the past little while, ever since doing our podcast. How are you doing today? We have, and I, I like it. And I like if you're looking at the podcast and you see this hat hanging on a hanger back here, that's because we're in the house. We're, we're in the house. We're ready to go. Yeah. We're ready to go. We've we're just, hung our hat. Yeah, we hung yeah. the hat. We're ready to go. Yeah. Um, we got to go on a little trip to Edmonton. Yeah, uh, we did. To a pastor's conference. That was really awesome. Trying to buy you a gift and you wouldn't let me buy <laughs> you something. not let you. I couldn't <laughs> find the right shoes. We missed We yeah. missed Jamin. We missed Jamin. We yeah. wanted him to be there. Yeah. But uh, next time, I feel like uh, we need to do more trips together for sure. Yeah, that'd be Maybe great. a fishing trip. Oh, man. Hunting trip. Something like that. Yeah, that would be good. Um, yeah. yeah, so before we get into the topic, I, I warned you about this. I wanted to do a little icebreaker game. Sure. I'm a youth pastor, so this is just my life, Yeah, have, uh, having to do this all the time. And so it's a little game called This or That. I don't know if you've heard of... Never heard of it. Or like a would you rather game. Anyways, we're okay. going to get into it. And I, I feel like I get to know you a little bit more and the audience okay. gets to know you a little bit more. Uh -oh. It's a fun little game. So it's no no pressure, okay? No, no pressure. There's no weird, well, hopefully no weird questions in here. <laughs> but uh, you ready for this? Yep. This or that. Okay, so pizza or pasta? Mm, pasta. Pasta. Okay. Yeah. I would I would have not have put you as a pasta guy, but yeah, that's I like okay. Pasta. All right. Uh next one is, and I know your your son doesn't like either of these, but cats or dogs? Mm, you a probably cat person? a dog. Okay, yeah. yeah. I thought I thought dog for yeah. sure. Uh next one, this is a classic debate. Coke or Pepsi? Neither. Neither. <laughs> I don't like either of them. Yeah. Yeah. If you had to choose, if you if had, I to, had choose, to choose, I'd to probably choose. go with Diet Pepsi or okay, something. Okay, Diet yeah. Pepsi. All right. Yeah. That's all right. I like Diet Pepsi too. Mm. Okay, next one is uh, back to the shoe debate. Nike or Adidas? Mm, Adidas. Adidas. Okay. Yeah. You're a classic man. Yeah. Uh, I think I know this one already, but hockey or soccer? <laughs> Hockey. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, this one is... We need to hang that Vancouver yes, Canuck hat. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Speaking of hockey, they there play tonight, go. and they're the Lord's team. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Crunchy peanut butter or smooth peanut butter? Smooth. Smooth. Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't see that one. I'm a crunchy guy, so... Okay. Uh, and, then, and then with the context of orange juice, pulp or no pulp? I like the pulp. Okay. So yeah. we're... we're Switching. Okay. Uh, <laughs> vacation or a staycation? Vacation. Vacation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is dependent on the weather for me, but hot coffee or iced coffee? Mm, iced coffee. Iced coffee. Mm -hmm. Even if it's cold. Even if it's I like, li I like, I okay. like cold drinks. Yeah. Right, there we go. Mm -hmm. uh, and now the last one. This is kind of a fun one, but uh, if you could see the future or change the past. I think see the future. Yeah, I yeah. thought so. Yeah, yeah, you think so too. <laughs> yeah. So you think you know me better than me? <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. I feel like I feel like changing the past is just cheating. <laughs> Seeing the future is kind of cool. Well, like I kind of think you can't do a whole lot about the past, but you can do a whole lot more about the future. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that kind of I guess that kind of goes into what we're talking about today. Yeah. Um. You know, a few mess or a few weeks ago, uh, you preached at KCC 
Um, and I have to say that it was probably the best message that I've heard on discovering your purpose and di- discovering mm. God's purpose for your life. Mm. Um, and I think that, you know, kind of you talking about that, it, it obviously like brings up some questions too. And I think um, this specific question is a common question in not only, I think, past generations, my mm. generation, but I think it's also like, it's like yeah. a universal question. And yeah. that's that question, like, what is my purpose? And yeah. um, I think that, you know, on Sunday, obviously, if you if you missed it, go back, watch that message on yep. our YouTube. Uh, honestly, one of the clearest messages on it. Mm. Um, but uh, something that I saw in you on that Sunday and kind of gave me hope was seeing your confidence in in that in that question and knowing mm. you know that there is there is a purpose for your life and that you can know it. Yeah. Um, and I think that so many people don't know their purpose and they don't know what their calling is. They don't know. Um, there's so much uncertainty. They can't yep. see the future. Yep. Uh, it's kind of like what we were talking about. It's your. There's a generation that's scared of the future, yep. and uh, I think just seeing kind of your uh, confidence in that, it really wanted me to to ask the question: What? And then maybe this is a big question. It is. Uh, and you could expound yeah. upon this. Yeah. We have lots of time. But what would you say um, brought you to the place of having such confidence? in knowing God's purpose for your life. Okay, the foundation behind that Malachi was um, just trying to process life mm-hmm. and, and looking at the whole of nature and the creation around me, and then looking at, of course, the creation of humanity. And when I look at natural creation, you see God created the stars and the solar systems yeah. and, and that incredible universe out there, and they all know their orbit. They all know their orbit. I mean, like... The, it's like natural, it's, like they yeah, know what they, to do. Gravitational yeah. pulls, yeah. all of that stuff, but yeah. they know their orbit. I mean, if the, if the, the sun could uh, grow a brain <laughs> and, and, and decide, well, I'm going to move in uh, 200 million miles closer to the Earth. Yeah. We're toast. Exactly. Right? I mean, yeah. really, we're, we're toast. Up. We're burned up, right? Or if it, it, if it says, I've been here a long time, I need a different universe to, a system to, or solar system to connect with and take checks out that we're, we're still toast. We're, yeah. we're in trouble. <laughs> it wouldn't work so well so, for us. So this sun does not have a brain, mm-hmm. but knows what it's supposed to do every day. Yeah. And then when you look at God creating um, the earth and he puts the seed in the soil and every one of those seeds create after their own kind. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you don't you don't have some farmer in Vietnam planting you know uh, rice, and then he goes back to the field, and there's coconut trees happening, yeah. right? <laughs> you have confidence as a farmer if yeah. you take this it's gonna seed, be rice. It's it gonna be will what you planted. produce after itself, yeah. right? And you go, well, man, this thing, this seed even knows, and it doesn't have a brain, doesn't have a spiritual connection to God, but that natural universe out there is expressing consistently mm. that it knows what it's supposed to be when it grows up, right? Yeah. It knows yeah. it knows something about it. I mean, you could talk, we, we've, we live on the West Coast, and we have salmon that will be starting to run yeah. pretty soon, right? And they come from a little creek into a river, into the ocean, hang out holidaying in the Pacific Ocean for four years, Look at their watch. Look at GPS or something to get their find their way back it's to the somehow same no. river, yeah. Yeah, going exactly. from freshwater to saltwater, saltwater to freshwater, then find the same creek that they were actually born in. That's just wild. And, and and we go to the mall, and we need to go and find. Well, you are here on that little sign. Yeah. This is where you are. Every time I right? go to the mall, it doesn't matter how many times I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> and then you and you think of so many people that are still out in the parking lot with their little, you know trying to figure out where they park the car, they, mm-hmm. we get lost in the mall. Yeah. And these fish are traveling thousands and thousands of miles and know how to get back home. Wow. So, you know, you can go on and on yeah. taking a look at the dynamics of nature. And I remember as a, a young man growing up going, man, we're the most stupid part of... <laughs> <laughs> all the creation is fortunately we are <laughs> we, we we wake up in the morning and we go you know who am i 
Yeah. Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? Where am I going? We have all those questions that seem to be answered in the whole of creation. They know their essential purpose and design. Wow, yeah. And so that, of course, brought the question up to me between me and the Lord. It's, Lord, um, why am I so stupid about this? I'm, I'm, I desperately want to know why I'm here yeah. and what I'm supposed to do and, and, and where I'm going. You know, I talk about it as identity, purpose, and destiny, yeah. those three dynamics. We all have that vacuum inside of us. We want to have an answer for that. Um, and I remember asking the Lord, and God, God spoke to me this word. He said, because I created you for relationship. Hmm. I created you for relationship with me. Yeah. So you're going to know, but it's going to be in your personal pursuit of a relationship with me because I know the thoughts and plans that yeah, I have yeah. for you to give you hope in a future. That's so good. I know that. You don't know that yet, yeah. but I know that. So if you will take some time to get to know me, I will start to unfold my intentions for your life and why I created you. Yeah. Because it's really in the, 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 you know, the thinking of the creator, why he's creating. It's like the painter painting on the canvas. It yeah. goes, this is why I'm painting this. I know the, the, the reason for what I'm doing. Yeah. And so that was, the, that was the trigger, if you want to put it that way, that, that I know it comes like sort of a rationale or a yeah. philosophy. Yeah. Uh, but then, of course, there was that seeking this out in the Word of God, and I began to find that um, there were all kinds of individuals in the Old and New Testament that God raised up, gave a very essential, clearly defined purpose, mm-hmm. and they either fulfilled it or did not fulfill it. I mean, you you see that probably in the life of Jesus, particularly when you see yeah. it's finished. Yes. Yeah. Right. You know, when they tried to kill him, well, it's not my, it's not my father's time yet for my life. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he knew, he knew the exact <laughs> he, he layout of the plan. And, which and he set his cool. eyes as a flint towards Calvary. Yeah. You know, and then when he completed it, he says, it's finished. I have actually finished the job, the work. And of course, um, Paul, same yeah. thing. I mean, in his own personal life, it was like, um, you know, I've I've completed the race. I've fought a good fight. Yeah. I've i you know, this is this is my legacy now. Yeah. David, the same way. It says in Acts about David that he served the purposes of God in his generation, hmm. and then fell asleep. So, actually, that's what I want on my tombstone. I just want like. David, he fulfilled the purposes of God and in his he generation, fell asleep. right? Like yeah. that, and <laughs> fell asleep. Okay, um, that'd be a great way to go, right? Yeah, exactly. But uh, so, as I saw Scripture unfolding, I began to realize there were a lot of people that understood what they were called to do and mm-hmm. be, and uh, they were able to complete and fulfill God's calling in their life. And I began to think, well, is that? something that's special for one person over another yeah you yeah. know <laughs> it's it that's a hard it's it's a that's a hard reality for some people to get over like yeah and that's something i wanted to get into well, later yeah. too if like you're, yeah. if you're a pastor you need to know yeah right well, no because the bible says all are called yeah yeah so the calling is on each one and then of mm. course that particular uh, statement in romans 8 that says you know for we know not guess not assume but we know that all not some, but all things work together, synchronize yeah. uh, for good mm-hmm. to those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Now, mm-hmm. one of the challenges in our the context of our, this generation is that we tend to be a people that go, um, I want to do this in life and God, please bless me. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like know, they, they have an idea... They're saying, okay, I'm going to do this, and, yep. you know, God, you better come along for the ride kind right, of thing, right? Right, They don't take the time to say, help me to see what you're doing mm. so I can do it. Help me to see why I was born and what I was born to accomplish. Um, Jesus made that statement in his own life, and he's, yeah. he was operating as the son of man, not the son of God in this setting. He said, you know, I only do what I see the Father yeah. doing. I only say what he authorizes me to say. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, you, you think of that. Yeah. That's that is an incredible level of of obedience and humility. Yeah. Right? In his relationship with the Father. And I thought, well, if Jesus was an example and a manifestation of that kind of submission, mm-hmm. then what about me? Yeah, because you feel like Jesus would be, of yeah. all people that could probably boast a little bit, <laughs> right. like have yeah. a little bit more confidence than you and I. But we want we want God in this generation to nuke nuke it, right? Yeah. Fast track it. Yeah. Like let's get let's get it going quickly. Yeah. Show me but, exactly the next steps. But and... that's but God 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 we want God to show us what He wants us to do. God mm. wants to show Him Himself. He wants mm. to show Himself to us. Yeah. Get to know me. Get to know me. Now, now, that's really, that's really an important part of the whole process. Yeah. Uh, you know, Paul's statement in Philippians when he said, "My determined purpose in life is that I might know Him." Yeah, that's right. That was like, his one. I'm captivated directive. with yeah. this. Yeah. Well, well, why is that important to get to know Him? Like, why is that important? Well, because the adventure that God's going to take you on in life. When he starts giving you assignments and your purpose in life begins to unfold, yeah. it's going to require knowing God. It's going to require. I'll give you an illustration of that. Mm-hmm. I was uh, I flew into uh, Taiwan to minister in in uh, Kaohsiung and, and a number of Tainan, mm-hmm. and I was dropped off at the airport to take this flight to Tainan late at night. <clears throat> got up to the counter and gave them my my ticket and they said well this 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 ticket isn't valid this is back in the times of canadian airlines yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not air canada canadian yeah. airlines so i'm going back a ways yeah so i'm sitting there saying what's well, got to be valid i mean like i got to be in tainan this is saturday night i'm supposed to be speaking at a church in tainan sunday morning and uh, she says sorry sir and by the way this is a holiday weekend we're celebrating i think it was the dragon or something mm-hmm. like that and and uh, all the flights are full, and my ride's taken off. Jeez. First time in the country, I can't even go and get a, a telephone uh, card to be able to phone anybody. I don't have the numbers and all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm 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 in a mess. So of course I do what every mighty man of God does. I go around the corner and start to cry. Right? <laughs> I go, Oh God, <laughs> please oh God. help me. <laughs> no, actually, I don't know how to speak this language. <laughs> actually, I, I wasn't. I wasn't actually in that space. I was in that a real place where you talked about confidence. Yeah, it's knowing Him was the critical thing to purpose because mm-hmm. um, I said, Okay, God, I'm I'm on this journey with you. You you want me in Tainan, so it's. It's not my problem. It's your problem, and you know all about this problem because you're on, on omniscient. Yeah, you know stuff I don't know. So what do you want me to do? I mean, that was it, and I then I waited mm-hmm. for God to speak to me because there was nothing else to do. And uh, God just said, "Go back to the lady, ask for a ticket." Mm-hmm. Well, I got in the line to the same lady <laughs> and walked up to her and said, "I need this a ticket." This man is stubborn. <laughs> I need a ticket. He must be American and or something. And she looked and she said, ah, there's, there's one ticket available. So I said, I'll buy it. That's of wild. Course, it was wild. It yeah. was wild. So I'm now I'm in a place of, well, whew, I'm going to make it on time. These people are waiting for me in Tainan to pick me up. I get on the plane. I sit next to this guy who's, he's in a, a nice casual sports jacket and everything. And he's sitting there and I look over him, at him and out of my mouth comes... You look like a general. Out of my mouth. Yeah. Like, like Carlene says, maybe I should watch what I say every <laughs> once in a while. But, but sometimes God, you know, the word of God says, open your mouth and I will fill it. Yeah, totally. So yeah. I go, I, in the midst of me saying it, I'm going, what am I saying? Right? Wow. I'm questioning myself. And he looks at me and he said, who told you I was a general? Because he's not in general fatigues. Yeah. I said, God. <laughs> he had his He's training like, in Carolina sweating. in the States, you know. And That's crazy. He, says, he said, God. I said, God to him. He pulls out his wallet and out comes all of this. This, And he's in charge of the defense of Taiwan against Whoa. mainland China. And I go, wow. Yeah. Wow. But did I have his attention? And did I know from a, that moment on that... That God purposely realigned my seat. Wow! Yeah, totally. 
And this man, would have been on the other plane, our missionaries seen that were in Tainan yeah. wound up teaching English to his children. Wow. So the relationship, and then, of course, she gave me the card. You have a problem? <laughs> yeah, call me. <laughs> call me, right? Call me next time. So, so I guess knowing who God is is absolutely critical because yeah. you get some people that really want to do something great for God, and they take a you know, an orphanage over in India, yeah. and they start working it, and then they go down to the post office and... Or they look at their uh, computer today and they go, uh, no one's put any money that promised they'd support me over here. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you know God is your provider? Did God mm. call you there or did you call yourself wow. there? Yeah. Because if God called you there, you're his problem. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And you're his blessing. That's a really cool way to look at you it. You know, so, but you better know God as your provider. Mm hmm. Or else, at that point in time, you're going to be depending upon yourself and writing some pretty quick emails back home going, yeah. uh, I've run out of money, i got to come home, right? Mm -hmm. So people that, people that know God, yeah. we want to know what we were supposed to do and why we're here. And God says, I want you to get to know me first, because yeah. that the, that's the foundation that will keep you in place. So I, I actually, when I was a young man, I just, I just dug in to get to know him. Yeah, uh, he's the. Yeah, what did that, what did that look like for you specifically? Oh, all? it was every time that I, I saw God in a different way when I was reading the Word of God. I underlined it. I color coded it. I, I did whatever. If he's my, if he's my, my counselor, well then why do I go to secular counseling before I go to him? Well, wow. Psalm one talks about blessed is the man. Who what gets his counsel from the Lord, not from the ungodly? Yeah. So I said, I'm, I'm going to get my counsel. If your counsel comes from Him, comfort comes from Him. I don't mm -hmm. go to people for comfort. I go to the Holy Spirit, who is my Paraclete, my Comforter. Yeah. And I draw upon that, so I experience His comfort, so that I can draw other people into that as well. So whether he's the repairer of the breach or he's the reconciler. I mean, you just go, the captain of my salvation, the author and the finisher of my faith. It doesn't matter how you just start describing who God is to you. What does that mean practically? Yeah. What does it mean? He's the completer. God promised he's faithful to complete that which he began in you. Mm -hmm. So I sometimes have a lot of pressure. Like, I, I got to... I gotta complete, right? <laughs> yeah, I gotta what's, finish yeah, this what's that job. Next step, yeah. And, and then I realized, no, um, Lord, you're faithful to complete that which you began in me. Yeah. So help me just to be confident and trustworthy in terms of looking to you as the completer. Um, so when I saw that in Scripture, I just said, get, help me to get to know Him, healer, deliverer, mm -hmm. forgiver. I mean, like. All of those things are critically important. If yeah. you you get on doing something, some assignment with God, and you you blow it, <laughs> yeah. if you don't know grace, yeah, if you don't understand His forgiveness, and the empowerment that comes from God saying it's okay, you can fail. You're not a failure just because you failed. Yeah, exactly. Get yeah. up. The righteous fall seven times, but then they, they get, get up. up yeah. Right. That's like one of my so, favorite verses. Those are, I think, you know, Malachi, those are the things that kind of gelled together with me in the early days, mm -hmm. and I began to go, okay, I, I got I to gotta take more of a look at this, and, and can I really know the will of God for my life, mm. uh, just like anybody else? Uh, or, or is that something only Jesus knew or people in a special, you know, well, area that, that was something you said on Sunday a few, a few Sundays ago that... I just was, I took that in and mm -hmm. it was just really, really cool. And I remember we had talked about it a little bit, your analogy with the puzzle and how there is a known will of God. And through the known will of God, you can have, you can know the, you can discover the unknown, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so how, like, how do we, how do we get to that place of, of knowing the will of God? And, and obviously you were talking about like how there is like, there's kind of a universal will. Mm -hmm. And then obviously there's those personal assignments. Um, so I guess what did that what did that look like for you? I know you I know you shared a little bit of this on Sunday about not everyone you know probably was there or if they missed it it'd be yeah. just great to. I mean I used the illustration of a puzzle. Number one, my wife really loves puzzles, yeah. and so we'd have family times at Christmas, etc. She'd buy this you know ten thousand piece uh, uh, puzzle, 
and we'd be sitting at the table eating and putting a puzzle in. Well, as I've shared before, uh, you know, when you take a look at the, the box and we know what the picture looks like, we start from the outside in and we find all the straight edges, etc. Well, there are straight edges in our walk with God. Yeah. And uh, that's why being in the Word of God is so important and having the Word taught to us is important yeah. because those straight edges become very, very clear. This is the will of God concerning you. I don't mm. have to guess. Yeah, yeah. To forgive, to love, to be patient, to be gentle, yeah. to to bear your burden with yeah. you. To, I mean, I I don't need to have a special word from heaven That's to right. do that. Yeah. Right. Totally. So that becomes the sort of the the outside of the puzzle of my life, yeah. and um, then. What I see in life is that God begins to give us certain assignments, and uh, when we're listening, uh, he'll he'll share something. I can give you an illustration of that in terms of yeah. when I was a youth pastor like yourself yeah. today. Um, I did something really different from a lot of youth pastors. They said, well, you know, how, how are you youth pastoring today? And this was a generation like in the 70s, right? Yeah. And I'd just come out of the Jesus People movement into Canada, which was had not caught up with that at all. So I was all I was psyched about being a, a youth pastor. And I, my first meeting was 15 kids. The second meeting was 10. The third was five, and we got a progressively worse. Oh, it was, and, and then I had a meeting with the board, and the the board came and said, oh, "We're not sure that you're called to youth youth ministry, right?" Because even the deacons' kids were going to other youth groups, <laughs> yeah. right? I said, well, just give me six months. Just wow. give me six months and let's see. Well, in the six months, we had about 150 young people meeting. Awesome. I went to the streets. Yeah, I went to the streets, and we got lots of people saved. And there was a, a movement that occurred there wow. that that when the kids came into church on Sunday, they took all the front seats. I mean, it was, awesome. they were messing with a lot of people's heads, right? <laughs> Making so yeah. many people mad. But yeah, and they came You're in. sitting in my seat. Yeah, they, oh. and they came in with the long Bad hair piece. and, you know, the hippie clothes and all that yeah. stuff, and, and all of a sudden the Jesus movement caught up with us in Canada, yeah. right? So, but then I thought, well, what am I going to teach them? I mean, when you take a look at all the stuff that was out there, it was all kind of, you know, sex and marriage and everything to try yeah. to get their attention yeah. or parties, pizza parties, yep. not yep. pasta parties. Yeah, not pasta. And, uh, we like pizza at youth yeah. ministry. <laughs> and I, we I live went, on. what am I going to do? And God spoke to me and said, you, you give them a really solid understanding of how I created them. Hmm. All right, so... The Lord led me to uh, Watchman Nee's The Spiritual Man. Yeah. Well, if anybody's seen that, it's three huge theological <laughs> books, right? And I took, daunting. <laughs> I took our young people through The Spiritual Man, your spirit, soul, and body. That's how God created you. Mm -hmm. This is how you can fix yourself. This is how you can understand your emotions, your spiritual discernment, your, uh, your, the requirements God is making on your life. Uh, this is how you interact. And I began to explain that to them. Well, there were quite a number of young people that actually went into the ministry out of, out of that, um, that first group. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know it was an assignment that God was giving me, not just for them, but yeah. for me. Yeah. So a number of years later, God opens up travel into China and Taiwan. Yeah. I start ministering there and the, and the, and the translators, they say, well, you're one of the easiest people to translate that we've ever worked with. Mm -hmm. I go, wow, that's wonderful. I guess I must be a great communicator, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and they said, no, 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 your theology aligns itself to a lot of what Watchman Nee has talked to us. So my two years yeah. teaching the, the youth... It was on purpose. ...was on purpose. And all of a sudden, that now becomes... A, that assignment becomes a part of the puzzle that I didn't understand, but now it's connecting now to something else, right? Yeah. And so I've got a lot of those kinds of things that are in the puzzle of my life now. Yeah. And and just like when you pick up a piece of the puzzle and you go, no, it doesn't fit here, it'll fit over here, the color matches or whatever it might be, uh, I know now the older I've gotten in and the more assignments I've completed and the more the sense of the call that is there and the more I know him, yeah. I know when God's asking me to do this or do that, that that's His will. Mm -hmm. That's another another part of the puzzle. When I put that in, all of a sudden my life becomes a little clearer as to what He's calling me to yeah. do. Right? Yeah. And um, 
you know, the difference with the puzzle thing is essentially when God gives you the puzzle, it's it's there's no picture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> so, don't get the box. <laughs> yeah, you don't get the box. You don't get an idea of what no it ultimately picture. looks like, and you want God to go ahead of you and tell you exactly what life is going to be looking like for you. Yeah. And no, it's baby stepping into your future. It's it's assignment by assignment. It's little obedience by yeah. little obedience. It's like the the that's a big scripture that that says uh, your word is a lamp unto my feet. Yeah, but it's like a little rickety lamp that doesn't really light up very much in front of you, right? It's like right. that one, yeah, two, three, next step. Got to step, step it next out. Step, yeah, yeah. So for me. Um, Getting to know the will of God was critically important, and, and that became another theological question. Yeah. If the whole world, the whole of creation knows the will of God, and God set it into motion and they're in obedience to it, um, then I need to know the mm-hmm. will of God. Now, why, why don't I know the will of God? Well, because probably I haven't asked. <laughs> uh, if you ask, it's a good place to start. <laughs> uh, you'll receive. If you knock, yeah. the door will be opened. If you seek, you'll find. Well, yeah. everyone who asks receives. Everyone who knocks, the door's open. Yeah. Everyone who seeks finds. So you go, okay, then I'm sure not doing enough knocking, seeking, and asking. Mm-hmm. I I need to I need to do that. Wow. Yeah. So I I purposed in my life to make this sort of like a. A daily regimen of, of waking up in the morning, okay, Lord, um, is there anything that you have for me today? Mm. Speaking into my heart. I, I, f- I believe in my heart that God cannot hold me rebellious or call me disobedient if I didn't know what to obey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I just don't point. see that about the character of God. Okay. And that essentially became a real issue with me. I said, okay. If you want me to be obey to be obedient, then you've got to show me yeah. what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Tell me what to do. I, my heart is to be obedient. I want to do it. Yeah. I love working for you, right? Yeah. I love yeah. I love the adventure you you get me on. But um, you got to make it clear. Do you think that that like exactly what you're just saying? Like the fact that, and it, it reminds me of this. Actually, I preached on this once. It was about the desires that like he gives you his desires. Yeah. Um and and you're saying like you actually want to obey. You actually want to discern. You actually want to know. Would you say and and I don't want to like throw anyone under the bus. Would you say that there's like a like I think you mentioned a little bit of that on Sunday like almost like a not ignorance but arrogance towards yeah. the will. Yeah. Um, did you want to just kind of touch on that a little well, bit? Well, I, 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 what I was saying to you was, uh, or to the congregation was, it's not that people don't know the will of God. I think God makes it clear. Hmm. It's that people don't like it. Yeah. They don't love the will of God. And um, I mean, if I'm deaf and dumb, God is the greatest teacher. Yeah. Uh, and he can shout loud enough to get yeah. past my de- he deafness. Used, he used a donkey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he can he can deal with my rebellion to such a degree that he brings the the consequence of rebellion to such a level that you go, I'm still now left with. It's all like almost like a Jonah story, right? Yeah. Like yeah. I'm going. You said left. I'm going right. <laughs> yeah. you, you know. Uh, okay. All right. Here's a whale. <laughs> here's a taxi. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I'll he'll take, take you there. He'll take you there. Yeah. Right. So. To me, it's like, and I'm, I'm going to say this, and it may not be as theologically correct in certain circles, but we have a, the will of God is sort of like A to B, like from where Jonah was to Nineveh. Mm-hmm. And Jonah goes to the Mediterranean, and God just enlarges the circle of his will, right? Because <laughs> there's nothing you can do, in quotes, outside of his will, mm. because God's will is capable of, of, of redeeming your mistakes. Wow. Yeah. And forgiving your arrogance wow. and overcoming your rebellion and mm-hmm. still giving you another opportunity. And so the word of the Lord came to Jonah once. The word of the Lord came to him twice. Yeah. The word of the Lord came a third time, right? So we see the dynamic in which the way way the, the Lord works at times in our life. He wants us yeah. to be into that place. And I wouldn't say it's my greatest desire emerging from my soul to be obedient. Yeah. The Bible says it is him that is at work within you. That's right. To will hmm. and to do his good will, his good purpose. So 
the Holy Spirit is actually working yeah. with the yeah. Father to ignite in my soul the will to do his, his good pleasure. So I, I need to cooperate with that. Now, this brings us to another thing. I just want to throw it in as a side because um, one of my good friends, uh, Norm, uh, wrote me the other day about prayer, and he's mm -hmm. writing on a discipline of prayer. And I said, in my response to him, I said, um, I think people have got a misunderstanding of prayer. Mm -hmm. And uh, my thinking is this, that prayer is just communication with God. It's just communication. It, it's, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to have a certain posture. It doesn't yeah. have to have certain vocabulary. Eloquent speech or it's, yeah, it's just, some sort of structure. It's just having a, a relational yeah. equity with the Father. Mm -hmm. And it is 99% listening. Hmm. It's not 1%. It, it's not 99% talking. And in our modern culture, yeah. it's like, wow. I only pray when... I'm in like, trouble. I'm in trouble. <laughs> it's chaotic. When you're stuck in an airport and right. you can't speak the language, <laughs> right. you're and on they're the not letting you on the plane. To God, yeah. right? um, <laughs> or when the bear's chasing you. <laughs> right. Uh, so, you know, you sit back and go, okay, um, how do you pray without ceasing? Hmm. Unless you're in listening mode constantly. Wow. Now, if I go and meet with a prime minister or the mayor of the city or whoever it might be, um, I listen up. I don't talk. I ask questions. I don't talk. Yeah. If I'm dealing with somebody of great influence, I'm a listener. Totally. Well, yeah. if I'm going to stand before the King of Kings and the Creator of the universe, <laughs> and then listen. tell him all of that I think he needs to do, right? <laughs> Scary. I, I mean, that uh, that just messes with a person's head all the yeah, time, right? Like, totally. Why would I do that? Yeah. I have the opportunity to sit with Heavenly Father and boldly come into his presence and ask him anything and learn from yeah. him wisdom, right? So to me, prayer is 99% listening, which I can do without ceasing. Yeah. As God's, you know, waking me up in the middle of the night and I've heard his voice. I've been doing other stuff and heard his voice. I've been preaching. And in the midst of preaching, heard God speak to me and say, you need to say this. Wow. I mean, so like when you're, when you're in that kind of dynamic of constantly listening, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah. But the challenge in prayer is this, and it kind of relates to the will of God. Whenever I pray, I become an answer to the prayer. Like Nehemiah. Yeah. It was this illustration. He prays, God, we're in a mess here. We're really in a mess. And uh, he's, he's got visitors from Jerusalem, and, and man, they're, they're practicing cannibalism. I mean, it's a mess. Yeah. Look, read the Book of Lamentations on this. And Nehemiah goes before God and says, God, you know, I repent of my sins and the sins of my fathers. And immediately when he does that, enters into a prayer mode, God says, okay, I want you to go to the king, right? Well, that's a death sentence to him. Yeah. But it's not stupid, right? Because he's going to be given a plan on how to rebuild the city. Now, he's not an architect. He's a slave working in the court yeah. of the king in Babylon. And God's not stupid when he does what he does. Yeah, exactly. Because Nehemiah is listening to everybody from the empire coming in with the problems of the empire. And what's he learning? He's in, he's, in, he's in college. I mean, he's in university. Yeah. He's learning all of the dynamics of how you build cities and take care of sewage and all that kind of stuff because those are the problems of the empire, and he's sitting in the court of the king, and God says, I'm going to give you the opportunity to rebuild an entire city. Wow. Now, now, here's the issue. Are you willing to risk your life to obey me? You see? So when he prays, now he's given an opportunity to have an adventure and an assignment that is risky. Yeah. Right? So a lot of people, when it comes to the will of God, they're not great prayer people because they're not good listeners. Two yeah. things are going to happen yeah. okay, when you pray. You bow your head to pray. Number one, God will start dealing with you about anything that's out of whack, mm -hmm. out of air. Which of, is 
Yeah. A lot sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible says he searches your heart. Yeah. See if everything is right. Right? So no sense sending out a, a broken vessel. Let's get the vessel clean and clear and fixed up, right? So we deal with our repentance and we deal with mm-hmm. all the, our offenses and our attitudes and all that stuff. The Holy Spirit will start dealing with that. And the second thing he'll do is he'll tell you what to do. He'll, he'll put something in your heart as an assignment. Now, that's why a lot of people don't like to pray. Number one, they yeah. don't want to have to confront it's themselves. Scary. And yeah. secondly, they don't want to have to do something because that means they have to risk something. Yeah. And uh, so at times I think that I, I've been in the place where man, that that's too much. I don't know if I can do that. You know, and God says, okay, I'll find someone. Because mm-hmm. it's going to be done. Because it's my purpose yeah, that's unfolding. Exactly. It's not yours. Yeah. It's mine. Yeah. So if Saul... I want you to be a part of it. Yeah. But if Saul, if you don't want to do that, yeah. Next I'll guy. raise up David. Mm-hmm. Right? So you, you find yourself in this place of going, okay, I'm going to miss out if I don't say yes to yeah. God. There were... You kind of answered the question that I was going to ask like kind of. 10 minutes ago, <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> which is awesome. But uh, I, I just, you sent me your book and I was mm. kind of reading through and, yeah. and the beginning of, you know, the uh, the book was your testimony mm-hmm. and um, you had heard like the audible voice of God and you said in your book mm. um, and that was kind of like what gave you that confidence and you referenced you know, you'd reference this earlier, but David and his confidence to face the giant, yeah. he knew, okay, God called me to be king. I have confidence in this. I know that, you know, before I die, I'm I'm going to be king. So I'm not king yeah. yet. So I have that confidence. And that was really, really, really cool analogy. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you haven't read the book, it's called Life Purpose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pastor David wrote this about 20 years ago. It's yeah. it's so, so it's, it's the amazing part about that book, even though it's 20 years old, we were saying this earlier, but it's mm. just, it's so relevant to what's mm. happening and to those questions that people are asking, but back to kind of what I was wanting to say, yeah. um, I you know I work in youth ministry, and I get this all the time, and it's this kind of repetitive question: is like, how do I hear the voice of God? Um, and you know, I you're kind of saying like we're we're bad listeners, right? Like mm-hmm. we're we 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 don't even want to hear the voice of God because if we hear the voice of God, He's going to deal with something inside yeah. of us, and so because yeah. um, it's I, relational yeah. before it's actional, yeah, you know. It's it, God's interested in the relationship being right, mm-hmm. integrity in that, or otherwise it messes up what we do. Yeah, like our actions are hypocritical because they don't reflect a a life of integrity. So God's really interested in yeah. the integrity of our life. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, so kind of, I guess what would you, who, who, what would you say to someone? I know you kind of a little bit yeah. answered this, but what would you say to someone that's really struggling to hear the voice of God in their life? I feel like I run into it so much. Yeah, it's um, it's a learned behavior, and it and it's learned by practice. Hmm. Okay, and it's so funny. I you were you're asking that question, and I had a, an individual ask me that after the service, and said, "Yeah," and said, "Like, I'm really feeling like I need to call this person, and I haven't seen them in a long time, and I'll be kind of out of the out of the, you know, blue. Out of the yeah. blue, out of it's not natural." But I, I really feel that I'm supposed to encourage them. I don't know what they're going through. Nothing, but it, that just comes into my mind. I said, okay, let's check that one out, okay? Um, would Satan lead you to mm. call someone to encourage them? Not at all. No, no. Um, is that something you, you would like to do? Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, can be the, the desire person. of our heart too, yeah. right? yeah. So I said, if it's you that's leading you to do that, that's good flesh. Mm. I mean, that's yeah, that's that's the good heart. That's good right? morality. Yeah. yeah, I said, but it's something that the more you get to know God in your life, is it something that you believe God would ask you to do? Mm. Is this sort of like a God thing, right? Yeah. Well, kinda. Yeah, I could see that. I said, yeah. well, then do it. Yeah. Well, well, what if what happens when I do it? Well, you don't know. It might, 
it, it's number one, if it's right on, it's going to encourage you and confirm to you God's speaking to you yeah. and that you're starting to hear His it's voice. It's going to build your faith. It's yeah. going to build your faith. Yeah. And and secondly, you don't know if that person is going to become your next best friend in the world. <laughs> yeah. You don't know what, because when God wants to bless you, He brings a person into your life. When the enemy wants to destroy you, He brings a person into your life. So yeah. who knows with the divine associations He's building that that could be a critical door that will open up the future to you if you obey. Wow. You don't know what that phone call will do. Yeah. You just do not know. I mean, I remember there was a time, um, I I guess we just have to get to a place where we believe that, that, um, well, let me put it this way to you. There are people that swear, right? Yeah. They do things wrong. Yeah. Okay. They feel a blush. They feel guilt. They feel yeah. some shame. If you say something wrong that's a lie, do they believe God hears that? Mm. As a Christian, we kind of go, yeah, and yeah. we feel that sense of conviction, right, that we just did something wrong because yeah. God hears that, yeah. right? Yeah, totally. So why is it we're so confident that God hears the negative, Man. but that God doesn't hear the heart yeah. that's crying out to say, I really want to serve you, Lord. Mm-hmm. And I want We're to so do- scared of that. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's it's just that, you know, I talked to one of the young ladies that was with us on the trip to Edmond, and she said she came home and she was attacked in an area of, of her body in terms mm-hmm. of health, that she hadn't experienced that before for a long time. Yeah. But we had talked on the trip about some stuff about connecting with God's will and God's purpose. And she did that. Yeah. And as soon as she did that, there was spiritual warfare. Wow. Yeah. Immediately. Her yeah. body was attacked, yeah. right? And of course, I've been standing with her in prayer because that enemy, that I felt like the word of the Lord to her was that enemy, just like Moses and Israel going over the Red Sea, this enemy that you've seen today, you'll never see again. Yeah. I mean, because... He wants to keep you from entering into your promise, exactly. your inheritance, yeah. your future, right? So uh, from the perspective of, uh, of this, some, oftentimes the, the body of Christ is caught with this feeling that God only hears the bad stuff. <laughs> yeah. God's the disciplinarian, right? Yeah. And it's all reactive, negative Christianity. Mm. And the enemy wants to that gospel to get out there. Yeah, he wants to use that. It's yeah. like God's this really angry man yeah. who's constantly judging, constantly looking yeah. down and saying, you're not doing this, yeah. you're not doing that. And you're not you're good evil. enough. You're not good enough. Yeah, yeah. all that stuff. So it's yeah. a false It's yeah. a false premise. It's a false gospel. But the the it doesn't bring good news. It's, it's the gospel of bad news, right? Yeah. yeah. So you sit back and go, well, God's not interested in telling me good things. So Mm. developing your ear, the ear, Jesus spoke of uh, the ear of a disciple. Yeah. Developing your ear to hear God say good things, like, I love you. Yeah. Can you hear that voice? I love you. Son, I love you. I'm proud of you today. Do we hear God saying that to us? Well, most of us have shut that out. Yeah. venue of communication out of a relationship. Yeah. Well, the father said that to his son. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Yeah. It tells me that even Jesus needed to hear the voice of his father yeah. affirming him. Yeah. Now, wow. And it was an affirmation on based on what he did because exactly. 30 years yeah. of age, he hadn't done anything. Yeah. He was no just, miracles. Yeah, he was just chilling. Yeah. We don't know what he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was just the first act of obedience. God yeah. said, go and get baptized by John. Yeah. Well, it's the right thing to do. Why? He just felt that was the right thing to do, and and it wasn't something the enemy would lead him to do, right? Yeah. But in that act of obedience, immediately the enemy came. And it goes from the baptism into the wilderness. Yeah, and he's tempted Yeah. every single day. And yeah. three times the enemy says, if you're the son... Chat attacks his identity. He doesn't attack what he's done because he hasn't done anything. He's just wow. been a good son to a, a carpenter's son, yeah. right? And and trying to be the best man he can be. I've never seen that before. But <laughs> but he attacks his identity because yeah. that's all he can attack is identity. 
And Jesus affirms his relationship to the Father. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to break this relationship to the to the mm-hmm. Father. Even though it was like bread. Eat right. some bread. Yeah. yeah. But he, if Jesus needed to hear that yeah. in his humanity, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. His pleasure was not so much on what he did because we don't see that yet. His pleasure with his son was on his identity and who he had become. He had learned obedience as yeah. a son. He was ready for the inheritance. And he came out of the wilderness into the temple, pulled out, pulled out Isaiah 61, and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, anointing me to preach. And he started his ministry. Yeah. And he went full send. Yeah. <laughs> he went full throttle. Yeah. Right? So I, I think that... Do you, so do you think that that... I know we were talking about this at, right at the beginning, before we even started recording, but uh, um, do you think that that comes from a, like, because even in your book, it was like understanding the times and kind of understanding where we are in the world in this kind of postmodern world. Yeah. And we had mentioned kind of like, and you had talked about this a lot, actually, with us, like the fatherlessness mm-hmm. that we experience in this generation and kind of going into this next generation as well. Do you think that that has a part to play in the way that people have viewed God, not aside from all the, what culture would say and aside from all the other things, but like even just the way like people not people not being able to receive a good word or people not yeah. being able to receive an encouragement or not knowing or or maybe they'd never, you know, heard uh, affirmation from their father because maybe they never grew up with a father or yeah. in a single parent home. Do you think that that would contribute to a lot of that? Or do you think that's yeah. just kind of a natural thing that happens within well, you know, the world. Well, all the way through Scripture, you see God struggling with one thing, and that is perception from humanity about who he actually is. Hmm. I mean, uh, in one of the books, I, I can't I pull it out of the air right now, but I think it's, it's Haggai or Hosea when he says, um, what iniquity, what sin have I committed that you walk away from me? That's God talking. Hmm. In uh, another part of Isaiah, he said, um, I've reached out to you and extended my arms to you. And you go and build an idol in the backyard that has eyes that cannot see, hands that cannot reach to you, ears that cannot hear you. Mm -hmm. And yet here I am with eyes to see, ears to hear, and hands to help you. Uh, Like, what is this? The fool has said in his heart, there's no God. And all, everyone like sheep has gone astray, gone their own way. Yeah. And like all of this is going on in the heart of God towards humanity. And so the attack right from the very beginning was on the identity of the Father. The perception of the Father. Wow. And so Jesus comes, and what's his intent? To show the Father. To show the Father, yeah. like, like Philip said. Man, but, that's mind-blowing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> now, Philip, he says... Uh, he says, show us the Father. Yeah. And Jesus said, well, haven't I been with you? I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah. Right? So Christ's heart was to bring an, a, a perfect expression of the heart of the Father to humanity Man. and to reconcile humanity to his Father. Yeah. Okay? So the attack constantly in scriptures on two factors, one on the revelation of who the Father is, yeah. to try and distort who God is, like he's some God that's yeah. distant and not close, or he's uninvolved yeah. and apathetic, yeah. right? Um, many images, yeah. false yeah. false idols, images, false yeah. images of God that are presented. The second attack is on sonship. Hmm. Because as soon as you, the spirit of adoption, where we cry, Abba, Father comes on our life, our life gets opened up to the miraculous. Yeah. It, it gets open to our own I- identity and our own sense of purpose and our own sense of destiny and inheritance. Uh, and, and the enemy wants to attack that too. He comes against sonship. Wow. So it, it's it's sort of like... Um, I know I'm doing a lot of talking here, but hopefully no, I, it's helping. But it's on, I'm, I'm on getting a, good at listening. I'm on a, I'm <laughs> right on a roll. I'm on a roll, yeah. Malachi. We got to keep so, it. Keep it so going. Elijah, Elisha. Elijah is spoken of, and uh, there are schools of prophets: the Jordan and mm-hmm. Bethel and 
you know, a number of places, okay? And um, is he, uh, is Elisha, Elijah is told that he's going to be taken up. And the prophets know that he's going to be taken up. And he goes out and finds Elisha, and Elisha asks him to follow. And Elisha just leaves everything just like the disciples and followed yeah. Elijah. And Elijah goes to the first place, and I think it was Bethel, and said, um, stay here. No, but there's a school of prophets here. There's 50 prophets, students, yeah. studying prophecy in that place, right? And he goes, no, I'm not staying here. I'm going with you. Wherever you go, I'm going, <laughs> right? He goes to the next place. Yeah. And, and again, Elijah gives him an opportunity to stay. Stay there. There's another school of prophets here. You can hang yeah. out with them, right? Yeah. Finish your education, right? No, I don't think so. <laughs> and it says the, the prophets were looking from afar off. They were looking at him. Yeah. They knew what was going to happen. Something was supernatural was going to happen in Elijah's life. So he goes to the third place, and again Elijah says, "Stay here." Yeah, I'm going on, and 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 out of Elijah's mouth comes this: "Know my father." Wow. Okay. Know my father. And I'm going to say it this way: Elijah was surrounded by students, but he only had one son. Man. And when he departed, the mantle fell to who? A son, mm -hmm. okay? So the attack throughout history has been on don't get to know God. Yeah. Truly don't get to know who he is because we want a distorted understanding of who the Father is to rule your thinking. Yeah. And the other thing is once you get a grasp of who God is, we don't want you to be a son because as soon as you're a son, you're an heir. And when you're an heir, you're entering into an inheritance. Yeah. Just like Jesus walking out of the te temple out of the synagogue, and starts his ministry healing and delivering and whatever. So it is really a stage that is that emerges, and yeah. we don't always have a, a clear understanding of what next steps look like, except mm -hmm. if I dedicate myself to getting to know him, yeah. I'm going to be ready for adventures and assignments because I know him. I know him. Wow. Okay? And I'll know the power of his resurrection, and I'll understand what it means to suffer with him, too. Mm -hmm. like, like there's spiritual warfare. Uh, on the other hand, that av av element of obedience is, is what makes a son. Yeah. And a son, God's looking for many sons, right? Yeah. Not just Jesus was the firstborn, mm -hmm. <laughs> but he's looking for many sons and daughters. So we don't want to get generic on that level. Yeah, and but I think I think too you don't have to because no. the the you were just talking about the inheritance and that that like even the Bible it, it doesn't use it in a gender way. It's saying, no. hey, like you're a son of God, whether you're a daughter of God or a son yeah. of God in, in in gender, but like you get to take part in the sonship, yeah. the inheritance. And I think that's, that's just right. That's so beautiful to me. So to me, like what is a, a major um motivation for me uh, all through my life was that um, I'm not pursuing my purpose. Mm. Um, I'm. I want to see what he's doing now. Yeah. When you think about it, and I'll share about this on this Sunday, but every miracle that Jesus did, he saw first before he did it. That's right. Wow. Every single miracle he did, he saw it before he did it. Why? Because he said. I don't do anything except, except what, what I see, see my the father, father doing, doing yeah. right? So his relationship to the father as a son was in such a clear uh, prism that when he was around people, he saw what the father would do or saw what the father was doing. Yeah. And he then participated with the father and establishing the eternal purposes of God for that individual so or cool. that situation. Yeah. So... When we're in this mode of living and you're constantly thinking from that kind of a, a perspective, you're building your sonship with mm -hmm. the Father and that, you know, it's sort of like a, a father can hear his son's voice. Mm -hmm. Like I can pick 
my son's voice out of a crowd. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because we've we've hung out you know, a lot, yeah. right? Yeah. We've communicated a lot. A child can pick out the father's voice, the mother's voice mm-hmm. in a crowd. Like a cow can pick up the bellowing of a little calf. Yeah. Like mother to 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 baby calf, right? So that is not um, a weird thing in my our relationship to God. Like the the world looks, God talks to you, yeah. you know, like, like you're crazy, you're you're, you're weird. <laughs> who told right? you who yeah. I am? <laughs> and I just want to say to them, yeah, He does, yeah. and I would like you to experience that yourself. He's not living two thousand years ago. He's not some ethereal Idea. spirit. Yeah, He is right with me. Not only with me, He's in me. So the voice I hear is from the inside out, mm. not from the outside. I'm not having heaven, yeah. you know, I don't need all this stuff. <laughs> Thunder, lightning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Christ is in me. Christ is in me. The voice of God, the Holy Spirit, is in me. And so the voice I hear, remember, remember when Elijah was talked about that, uh, when he 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 checked, checked out and ran from... That woman with a whole lot of makeup, mm. Jezebel. Yeah, Je- never. <laughs> took, that lady. <laughs> he, he took off into the wilderness running, like because she was after his hide, right? Yeah, Blah, I'm gonna get Crazy. you. And he's sitting under a, a tree and gets an angelic visitation, which would have woken most of Anybody. us up, right? Yeah. And then God's God uh, he had, goes through an experience of fire and earthquake. Yeah. And he doesn't he doesn't see God there. Not anywhere. in all the noise. Not in yeah. all the noise yeah. around, right? And he's he's complaining to God and saying, you know, everyone has deserted and abandoned you except me. Hmm. And God's saying, hey, there's fifty thousand that have not bowed their knee. You're you're not alone. Yeah. And it's probably time for you to leave. I'm coming for you, right? Yeah. Like, and get here's a few assignments, and then come on home. Yeah. But in the midst of it, he hears a small, still, still yeah. voice. The whisper. Yeah. In the midst of the hurricane, mm-hmm. in the midst of the fire and smoke, he hears the small voice. That small voice is not on the outside. Mm-hmm. It's on the inside. God in us. Yeah. Christ in us. And you and you probably say predominantly, too, like as we're talking about the voice of God, like that's like predominantly how he speaks. Like we could probably count on our, our hands the number of times that God speaks right. kind of in that outside Kind of through an you angel. You need to or, come to that place yeah. where you're doing that on the number of times a day God spoke, speaking to you, yeah. not in your life. Yeah. I'm just telling you yeah. that that our our lifestyle has got to be one of God's talking all the time. Mm-hmm. We're connecting constantly with what he's saying. And now God doesn't have to speak. Like there's no gun to his head to yeah. talk to you, right? <laughs> yeah. um, but, but I'm always postured to listen. Mm. And if God doesn't speak, that's fine. I'm to be a vessel fit for his use, yeah. right? Not always used. Sometimes I'll look at the <clears throat> the dishes in the cupboard, some of the most beautiful we bring out a couple times a year, right? Yeah. Yeah. But the other ones we use every day. Yeah. So I'm an honorable vessel fit for the master's use. Wow. And that's fine if he... If he says, gives me assignment today, that's fine. But I, I'm talking to him. Yeah. I'm talking to him now when I'm talking to you. Yeah. It's in my heart mm-hmm. towards him, asking God to help me say the right things in my response to you. But I, that's my heart for the next generation is... Totally. <clears throat> yeah. They need to know... Coming to that place. They need to know God. Get to know him. Yeah. Uh, you know... The first thing, priority, get to know God. Yeah. Second priority, get to know God. <laughs> yeah. You know, third priority, get, get to, to know, know God. God. <laughs> yes. The, you'll need to know that he's omnipresent. You're going to need he's omniscient. Mm-hmm. You're need, going to need to know it. He, he's all powerful. There's n- like the all knowing part of God is that he's gone into your future already and made a way so that when you get there, you know he's already been there. Yeah. Wow. Like you go, you go, Okay, I'm a little confused about what to do right now. Why is this door open? <laughs> <laughs> but but you're not. Yeah, you already know the future. Um, you're the who 
was and is and is to come. Mm -hmm. You're in that space where there's no time with you. Time is all one mm -hmm. with you. So I go, okay, I don't know what's the future, but I'm going to trust you that because I'm, I know you are the one who knows. So would you just tell me what you know? Yeah. Just tell me what you know. And being brave enough to, <laughs> to feel like you can, right? Yeah, and, and brave enough to, to, to acknowledge that I don't know. Mm -hmm. Brave enough to acknowledge that he knows better than I know, that yeah. his thoughts are higher, his mm -hmm. ways are higher. So how do I, I get myself into that place uh, where I'm constantly listening mm -hmm. and learning obedience and then the more I learn to be obedient, seeing how God comes through and establishes his will yeah. uh, through assignments. So uh, I, that'd be exciting to me to see happen, I guess, because it was Jesus, the pattern that Jesus had. To, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so, it's such a common thing too in our world for people just not knowing mm -hmm. and I think there's many factors to that as well for especially young people too because there's like I talk about this all the time in youth ministry like there's always distractions there's always something else mm -hmm. to listen to there's always a something else to watch there's yeah. always something else to take my time there's there's always something else and and yeah I, I want to mm -hmm. see that too I want to see yeah. this next generation I and I actually do see it I see that there's mm -hmm. like there is that hunger but it's almost like it's, I'm hungry, but I don't know how to to make my own food, right? Like I don't mm -hmm. know how to, like, get in the kitchen and and do it myself, and to yeah. start to actually learn. And I I love that you said it's it's a learning process, but it's it's like even what you said last last mm -hmm. podcast. Some things are taught, some things are caught. It's kind of mm -hmm. like a both and, yeah, it is. right. And I think that we have to, you know, obviously, leaders need to model this as well. More and more and more. Well, we're, we're in a season of, of both the apostolic or the fathering mm -hmm. because we're in a fatherless generation. Yeah. That, that, and the enemy is attacking that. He's attacking, like I said, fathers and sons. Yeah. And trying to rip away from us destiny and inheritance. Mm -hmm. On the other side, you have the emergence of the prophetic on a level we haven't seen for the last maybe 20 years. And the prophetic is an important factor in this because, and, and to some degree, it's created a dependence because mm -hmm. we have sons and daughters who really want to hear from God, yeah. right? Yeah. So the prophetic actually comes alongside and says, this is what the Lord is saying to you, mm. right? Oftentimes, a true prophetic word is a confirmation of what God is already yeah, saying. Yeah, it's already happening. Yeah, right? you, yeah. Don't, you don't want to be having prophetic words over you that are directive yeah. when that are like not, hey you're going to move to china yeah. you're going to marry a lady named anna <laughs> yeah. like yes. yeah. you're so, going to be on a wild goose chase right like again that's a <laughs> that's again a part of the knowing the nature of god yeah totally okay yeah. because he's not the, he's not god's gonna not going to go to somebody yeah. else to talk about you mm. that's that's you know that's out of his that's out of yeah. out of his character and nature that's yeah. gossiping right yeah <laughs> i mean he's talking to somebody else about you well we have a relationship god is going to talk to you first mm. now if you don't listen to him there's the difference then he's going to bring someone to david right <laughs> yeah yeah nathan yeah right? nathan yeah. what are you the, doing david yeah, what are you doing david <laughs> and and david's going to go you got me yeah you got me you're yeah. right i'm wrong yeah. right because we're, those are backup statements from the prophetic to let you know that God knows and that you know. Yeah. And, but there's a craving in the generation to have God speak, mm -hmm. right? And they, uh, people will go for all kinds of places to try to have a yeah. prophetic word totally. over their life, right? They chase it. They'll like chase it. Chasing after and What like they a, need yeah. to do is chase God. Yeah, wow. They really need to draw close to him. Because the Holy Spirit will speak to you first. He'll confirm through other people. Mm -hmm. And when you get on this trail or, you know, of, of seeking for a word from someone else, you know, I, I remember I was, it, it's, tr it's troublesome. I, mm -hmm. I was at the altar one time and, and someone said to me, man, what you said from the pulpit today really convicted me. Mm -hmm. 
could you pray with me? I said, yes, happy to do that. But you first need to repent to God for not listening to him. <laughs> what did his face look like? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, you know, what do you mean by that? Well, I said, you're telling me that I convinced you to change and mm. repent and deal with your conviction, deal with your sin. But you were not listening to the Holy Spirit the whole time because the Holy Spirit's faithful to convict you of sin convict you of righteousness, Mm -hmm. and convict you of judgment, consequence. Tell you what's wrong, what's right, and what the consequence is. That's his role. So he'd been talking to you, but you weren't listening to him. (laughs) And, and, And it's kind of offensive to the Holy Spirit that you would listen to a man convince you to change. Wow. Mm -hmm. When the Holy Spirit had been convincing you, you need to listen up to the Holy Spirit before you listen to a man. The man that was speaking to you this morning was just confirming to you what the Holy Spirit was dealing with you about. Wow. Does that make sense? That totally makes sense. So so I I think that this is all kind of compiled into knowing who God is. Yeah. That's the the center point that you're talking about. It is. And if you if you get to know him, then it's easier to understand his will and to follow his promptings and to hear properly. Mm-hmm. And then if you have the willingness to obey, even if there's fear and questions and all that, the thing that overrides it, the confidence that we were saying that yeah. I have is that I know God. Remember when John wrote his book, he said, I write to you children because your sins are forgiven. Mm. And I write to you young men because you're victorious over the devil, right? Yeah. But I write to you fathers because you know him, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So the emergence into fathering in the house is by hanging out with people that know God. Yeah. I know him. And there's something about that. You know, a master mechanic, it'll run now. Yeah. I fixed it. Well, I don't know. Yeah, do you trust me? I yeah. know I'm a master mechanic. I know how to fix things, mm-hmm. right? Well, do we have that trust for God? Do we know him enough, right? Yeah. That's that's critically important. That's so key. Yeah. Man. And young people, they would rather have a crash course on that. Totally. But it's yeah. a crash life on this, right? Yeah. Like, it's, it's like... Well, it's like you were saying, like, how long does it take to raise a, a child? That's how long yeah. it takes to yeah. disciple someone. Yeah. It's it's years and years and years and years in the making. Yeah. The problem is, you know, you know this, and everyone wants the instantaneous, Yeah. like, give me the Return. answer. Yeah. Show me the map. Yeah. Give me the puzzle. I want the picture, please. Yeah. <laughs> like, let me put in all the pieces. And it's. But, but I want to really assure the generation that's listening right today is that God has a personal, yeah, intimate plan of where you fit in the pursuit of His purpose in your generation. Yeah. He has a place for you. Mm-hmm. He has a. He has something for you to do. And the more you activate that obedience, the more is opened up to you. Mm -hmm. He's looking, he's searching, the Bible says, for an intercessor, someone between, as we're talking about heaven and earth, someone who will link the intentions of our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy will, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How do we link that? Mm -hmm. Well, we have to find people that are connected to The heart of heaven there. and the heart of the Father. Well, right? it's it's actually really cool because that was like one of my last last questions. I guess we're kind of wrapping up a little yeah. bit here. I think we're okay still on time, right, Jamin? We're not too too long. I know we want to keep it in within a sort of a time yeah, limit, no but problem. um, I just written this down because it's something I always think about, and it, it really just kind of wraps into exactly what you just said. Like there is specific callings, and it's mm-hmm. it's kind of like the myth that you hear a lot of times that only in, only people in ministry or only people that are pastors or only people that work for the church, those are the called people, you know, and me over here working at McDonald's, mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. not called to anything special. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and obviously you kind of answered it a little bit, but um, like how would you address that in someone or how would you help someone in that space? Because I feel like you see it way too often with mm-hmm. with people that you know they're sitting in the pews and yeah. they they don't know, you know they don't know if they're called and and you might say it from the stage but it's like they don't believe it right. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and and how do you help those people? And I know that I know that this like even just some of the stuff you said like it's like the deepest well of wisdom that I've heard come out of you, mm. um, and just you know I I I'm so grateful for this conversation because I think it's so it's, real it's so prevalent. Yeah. Like, but how would you help someone? You know, even just like kind of breaking that stigmatism. Like, hey, no, you're called. Like, um, and how do you help those people along the way well, to discover again, that? Again, it's part of who's calling, right? Yeah. And are you going to pick up? Yeah. Are you going to pick up? <laughs> like, I mean, that's that's as simple as I know on this level because you're all called. You're all called to be a minister. Mm. You're all called, according to Second Corinthians chapter five, to be a reconciler. You've been given the message and the ministry of reconciliation. You're all we're all ministers. Mm-hmm. Not just the one on the platform. Not just the one with the mic. No. Yeah, we're all called into the ministry of reconciliation and given the word or, and message of reconciliation, mm-hmm. okay, to bring people to the Father. So just as Jesus saw and began to have confidence in what he saw, that it was the Father, like when Jesus uh, saw the blind man, healed him, is that something the enemy wanted to happen? No. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to step into that role, yeah. okay? Well, what if I step into it and it doesn't happen? I've had a number of those in my life where I felt led to do something and in nothing, you know, nothing <laughs> seemed to happen as a result of that. Yeah. Nothing may have happened in that environment except I learned obedience. Yeah. Something happened in your heart. Something happened yeah. to me. And I was willing to take that step of faith, right? But there are many times that when I did take the step of faith, there was a, a, a clear conclusion or result or action from it uh, that I saw God at work. So that encourages me to step up again, right? Yeah. So the question of who's calling is critical. Are we going to pick up? Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter if you're, you know, handing out burgers at Dairy Queen yep. and meeting people in the drive through um, You can say things, you can do things that express the heart of yeah. God towards every individual you meet, you can sow seeds that yeah. are absolutely immense. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's it's a vitally important factor, and it, it it can be just like I was in a, I was stopping for gas and went in to grab a coffee one time, in uh, a place near Alberta, and uh, went up to the lady, and uh, how are you doing? She says, not too good. Hmm. You know, not, not, a, not everyone is open to that response, right, or open to share at that point. She's behind the counter taking care of people, and yeah. I'm paying for a coffee. <laughs> yeah. I just come in to say hi, you yeah. know, and uh, thanks for the coffee. How are you doing? I felt to ask her that, right? Not very well. Hmm. Okay. I know someone that can help you. Can I pray for you right now? See, it all came out of a a word that I said, yeah. how are you doing? Yeah. Just an well, Many people pass yeah. that off, but that day in her life, it was not very well. Mm. Okay. Now I know why I'm having coffee at this <laughs> shop yeah. with you. I'm here, I'm here to, on purpose. I'm yeah. here to breathe something into yeah. your life that there's a solution and hope. Man. Yeah. Right? So I prayed for her. Now there's people gathered to pay for stuff in the Waiting. lineup. Well, <laughs> the, then you're, you're doing something in the presence of witnesses, right? Yeah. And they're seeing the impact. Wow. And I, I saw tears come to her eyes. I mm-hmm. saw the impact of prayer and someone caring mm-hmm. enough to just stop their day and say, my coffee is not as important as praying for you. Wow. So if you're, you know, God will put you in those situations and what are you going to do about it mm. when God calls? Are you going to pick up? Yeah. Or are you going to hang up? Or just continue yeah. on with whatever you're doing? Yeah, or, or not answer or, the call. You know, being right? impatient or being you know selfish. Yeah. There could have been an easy moment it's of selfishness. As, it's right? as simple as that. Yeah. We don't try to make it so super spiritual. Totally. We just we just lock into the character of God, and is that something that God would be? Uh, bringing up at this point in time. So the, when I say this to you, 
Everyone is called. Everyone is a minister. Everyone has a responsibility to reconcile the world to God. Mm -hmm. And has been given the word and the ministry of reconciliation. So function like that, wherever God's placed you. Yeah. Your watchman on the wall. Mm -hmm. You're there particularly placed. I, I talked to a, a young sister yesterday, and uh, um, she said, I, I, I always want to be on the mission field. <laughs> she's an engineer, yeah, right? And she's working in an engineering office, and she had all kinds of pressure on her to perform and mm. accomplish it. And, and to some, she loved the job, but she hated the job. She really felt she wasn't doing anything for, for God, yeah. right? And always wanted to be able to t have time to take a mission trip, right? And didn't have yeah. that time. Yeah. And um, she's moving up here with her husband and family. And so I met with her yesterday, and she said, well, we had a sort of a party at the end where they sent me off. And you wouldn't believe what people were saying. And I realized hmm. all this time... I did have a mission field. Yeah, it was right there. It was right there. Wow. Right? It was right there. That was the flock that God, the people group that God had called her to. Yeah. So let's not dismiss this or diss it. Yeah. Disrespect it. Yeah. Because um, you might wind up later on in life going, uh, I just, I regret the fact that I was always looking for something on the other side of the fence. Wow. Greener yeah. grass. Yeah. When in reality, God had me exactly positioned where he wanted me to be. Yeah. Now, act like a minister there. Mm -hmm. Be faithful to the soil and, this, and, this, and the ground that God's given you, and God will enlarge your sphere of influence. Yeah. That is so beautiful. Mm. Um, I so enjoy hanging out with you. I don't know, you bring <laughs> lots out of me. So. I love it. I love that I could bring it out because uh, that was... Mm -hmm. That's impactful. I think that, uh, yeah, one of the, I think one of the best podcasts we've done to date. <laughs> out, of, out of two. Out, out of the out two. Of hey, five, you know what? We can only go up from here. Um, well, yeah. I guess I, I want to wrap it up because there, mm -hmm. there's just so much in that. And I, and I think that that was just uh, amazing. And honestly, Holy Spirit led. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Look at this camera. Um, yeah. But thank you. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you so much for for being with us today, Pastor Dave. I'm sure you're just going to be a regular. Not a, you're not a guest anymore. <laughs> well, thank you for the opportunity, <laughs> Malachi. This yeah. is this is important for me too. Oh yeah, well, yeah. awesome. Well, for those listening today, thank you for joining us on the mezzanine floor. Uh, like and subscribe uh, if you're listening on any podcast platform. Uh, follow uh, follow the mezzanine floor podcast, and if you're on YouTube. You know, smash that like button. Follow us our follow us on our KCC YouTube page. Uh, again, uh, this is our purpose: is to uh, help, equip you, resource you, encourage you. And I pray that this encouraged you today. So we'll see you next time on the mezzanine floor.